I'll have to tell you more next time because I've got to wind down. Let me hear you say transgenerational wealth. Transgenerational wealth. And I do wish I could tell you what happened. Uh, the first time that they came and reported to me, after I selected them, it was that very day while they were sitting in my house that the stock market started for the stratosphere. And it's been going there ever since. And I will tell you, it is unreal how money makes money. And I'll give you a word here. Maybe somebody will spell it on the board there. I think I had you look it up in the dictionary. I don't know. Exponential. Let me hear you say it. E-X-P-O-N-E-N-T-I-A-L, I think. And put the term exponential curve. Let's say it. Now, by the time your money gets up to over a hundred million dollars, even before it gets quite there, it hits that exponential curve. Say it, y'all. You have to learn how to speak in other tongues. You know, other tongues is more than glossolalia. You got it. Let me hear you say the money tongue. Curve. What is this? When your millions begin making millions and the compound interest starts to happening, it multiplies exponentially like rabbits let me hear you say my money multiplies like rabbits my money multiplies like rabbits my money multiplies like rabbits come on say it my money multiplies like rabbits all right hold it I gotta go hold, 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 hold. but I gotta get you around this exponential curve And I tell my folks, you know, the, the colored folks in, in New York, you know, in these classes, the business of living, I said to all of them, I said, listen, when you all get off from work downtown, don't get on the subway until you buy the Wall Street Journal. I said, even if you don't know Dow from Jones, they don't know that. <laughs> and, and, and I said, while you're hanging on that strap, have that thing folded like those Wall Streeters, and you just be looking at it. You don't know what the hell it is, but look. Look and live, my brotherly. And, and, and watch them people's eyes bulging out of their head. You know, because they don't expect y'all to do that, you know. And y'all have no better sense than to live down to their expectations. Okay, I... I I, I got to finish now. What did I, I didn't finish it quickly here? Let me do it. This transgenerational wealth. Yeah. Now that's 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 how you start producing transgenerational wealth. The bishop said, "Pay tithe to yourself." Thirdly, your income after your tithes and offerings. which is first, church income. I had to fight my first director of operations because I told my wife. My wife has a bachelor's degree in business education and a master's degree in parapetology. Like me, she worked her way through school. She used to clean people's houses when she was in high school. I started working out cleaning folks' houses when I was 11. I would, every Friday I'd go to this lady's house and scrub and clean from the front porch down the back porch for the sum of one dollar. And I declared to God that woman never washed a dish until I came in there on Friday. 
I'm going to go over there in Ridgeland and, and take a picture of that. i I got to have a picture of that place. Every time I pass by there, it's there. You know, just to show people, look where he brought me from. All right. So I had to fight this guy because I made a rule. The church's money. You will, when the income comes in, I don't care what, you will put the investment money in investments first. You know, another secret is, I got to pay my bills. Now, this is something, please hear this, good people. The only thing colored people mostly know about money is to spend it. Pay yourself. And I'm going to tell you a secret about your creditors. You may owe everybody from here to Egypt. But if you've got some money, you can get some money, and they'll work out a deal with you. But you ain't got no money, you don't get no respect. And too many people, now this, this is a fatal mistake and don't make it. Too many people think that I don't have enough money to do that. Reverend Ike is talking about money management. And all that. Yes, you do, and you'll never have it unless you do it. Despise not the day of small things. Whenever a baby is born that's close to me, I get an investment certificate for that baby. Every one of your children, the next thing you get after the birth certificate, get some kind of an interest-bearing certificate. That child will know subconsciously and it will give that child, that child's wealth consciousness will begin to grow up. I've took, taken colored fellas with me to these big fancy restaurants where the rich people come and we'd sit there and, and I'd point out, I says, I want you to watch those kids. See how they act. See how they talk. See how confidently they smile. See how they eat with good table manners. See how they don't sit down at the table until their mama and all of the women have been seated. My wife and my son have traveled places in the world which I have not traveled physically. And when he was a little fella in short pants and he and his mother were about to take off for Europe or somewhere, I called him into my office and said, now son, wherever you go with your mother, you go to a restaurant or somewhere, don't you ever sit down before you give your mother a seat. And I'd point out those rich kids. I said, look at them. They're different. You will know them. If I saw them in the parking lot, I'd know. All right. I um, set my wife up with that hundred thousand dollar policy come here son help me get my stuff off the off here the man came back to report because they sent the doctors they had to investigate us and I saw the investigators following me and watching my house came back he said Reverend your application for that policy for a hundred thousand dollars came out all right except one thing the investigators said, the, the, the official invest, investigative report says that there are three angels that live in this house with you and we must know who those three angels are. This was not a church sister who ate too many collard greens, you know, and dreamed about <laughs> Big international insurance company. And that's when I got Pentecostal. And then I got Billy Graham. And I said, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that love him and delivers him. I said, that's my explanation. He said, well, you got to tell the people downtown. He got the people downtown on the phone. I had to tell them the same thing, and they accepted it. 
So they wrote up that big $100,000 insurance, and the, and the man got outside the door. My wife came to me just smiling and just laughing. <laughs> I thought you're laughing at my baby. She said, oh, <laughs> she said, I and my next husband are going to live it up. <laughs> I said, call that man right back here. Call, call, call him back here. I said, you put that same insurance on her. <laughs> and I said to her, I said, oh, <laughs> I said, I and my next whatever are going to live it up. But you see, that th these are just some, and I, I, I've just got to cut it here, but this is some of the way that I set myself and my family up for transgenerational wealth. And I remember that day when I went to interview those final two people that I decided I was going to let handle the money. The last place they took us to was way up in a penthouse on Wall Street with early Americana motif. And it looked like there were a hundred people sitting around that table from one end of the block to the other, way up there. And this was the second one that I had gone to. The first one that I'd gone to to, to interview. And by the way, the, the two different people should be of two different schools, conservative and semi-aggressive. Uh-huh. Now, I looked way down there at the first one. And I was listening to those people using all those big words that exponential curve. And there they were handling investments for the teacher's fund, the fireman's fund, hundreds of millions of dollars in each fund. I did like Bishop Lee. I had to get up and go to the window. And I looked way down on the ground and I saw people scurrying and scrambling around like ants. And I talked to my mother in the other dimension. I said, Mama? I said, look at this. I said, these people up here talking about hundreds and hundreds of millions, and look at those folks down there scrambling around from one paycheck to the next. I said, Mama, I'm going to set this thing up. When we got to that last group, and they were sitting around this huge table that looked like a block long up in the tower, in the penthouse. And I started throwing back at them what I had heard those other folks say, you know. One of them said, Reverend, he said, uh, at least you know the language and you know the right questions to ask. I said to him, I said, sir, it's time I told you my white boy, colored boy story. I said, the colored boy said to the white boy, how come you're so smart? The white boy said, I take smart pills. Colored boy said, well, where can I get some of them smart pills? He said, well, we have to go out in the woods to get them. Come on, let's go. And so the colored boy and the white boy went way out in the woods. And when they got way out in the woods, the white boy reached down behind the bushes and picked up these little brown-looking tablets. <laughs> and said to the colored boy, here, here's, here's some smart pills. Take one. Colored boy took one, put it in his mouth. Colored boy says, you know, that tastes just like rabbit. The white boy says, see, you're getting smart already. <laughs> so I said, gentlemen, <laughs> I said, gentlemen, this is my second investment meeting today and I'm getting smart already so listen as I close say to all the folks around you this is my third night here and I'm getting smart already <laughs> <laughs>